listen to this song. I was born sick, but I love it. Command me to be well. Amen. 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 Take me to church. I'll push up at the shrine of your life. I'll tell you my sins so you can sharpen your knife. I'll bleed that deathless death. I'll give you my life. Take me to church. I'll worship like a dog at the shrine of your life. I'll tell you my sins and you can sharpen your knife. I'll live that deathless death. Good God, let me give you my life. That's not God. I'm a pagan of the good times. Right, I'm a pagan. Keep the goddess on my side. She demands a sacrifice. Tame the horses. Wow, something meaty for the main course. Wow, look at that you on your high horse. What you got on that table? All the starving, unfaithful. Tasty? There's plenty? These are hungry words. Take me to church. I'll worship like a dog at the shrine of your life. I'll tell you my sins and you can sharpen your knife. Offer me that deathless death. Good God, let me give you my life. Wow. And he was speaking about his girl and he said, his girl who is clearly a heathen. He was actually speaking about his gay lover. Take me to church. I dreamed this last night. It was very upsetting. My lover's got humor. She's, she's the giggle at a funeral, knows everybody's disapproval. I should have worshipped her sooner. If the heavens ever did speak, she's the last true mouthpiece. Every Sunday's getting more bleak, a fresh poison each week. We were born sick, you heard them say it. My church offers no absolutes. She tells me worship in the bedroom. The only heaven I'll be sent to is when I'm alone with you. I was born sick, but I love it. Command me to be well. Take me to church. I'll worship like a dog at the shrine of your lies. I'll tell you my sins and you can sharpen your knife. Offer me that deathless death. Good God, let me give you my life. Take me to church. I'll worship like a dog at the shrine of your lies. So I got the words wrong a little bit, but I, I was vibrating from my dream. And in my dream, I was with a huge religious family. It was my twins family. And they were keeping him from me because he was doing what he felt his religion called him to do, just like I did my entire life as a Jehovah's Witness, until I realized that the lies I was being told were not coming from God, they were coming from man. Honor your father, father and mother so that it may go well with you. They don't say cut your mother and father out of your life because they're a different religion. Cut your brother out of your life because he's a different religion. Cut your sister out of your life because she's a different religion or has left your religion. No, you can't associate with those people in high school. They're worldly people. They're worldly. These are, the, these are the poisons that are preached from the platform. These are the poisons that are pounded into our heads as children, and we grow up fearing our God instead of loving our God and knowing he's our friend and our father. One God overall, not a Jehovah's Witness God and a Catholic God and a Hindu God. I'm sorry. Ganesh, Lakshmi, Buddha, All of them, they're symbols to me. Ganesh is the obstacle remover. Just a symbol of that. Just a symbol of spirit working for us. Lakshmi is a goddess of compassion and love and mercy and forgiveness, which is what our God, our one God teaches. Buddha, he's a happy Buddha. It's about happiness and love and friendship and goodness. Camaraderie, compromise, forgiveness. These are just symbols to me. These are just qualities that we want to emulate but I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness and I was raised that I wasn't allowed to associate with anybody in school because they were worldly kids bad association would spoil my useful habits well while I was a Jehovah's Witness my daughter was molested by my husband who was a Jehovah's Witness my stepfather beat me he did that because he was so pressured that he lost his he lost his mind he lost his cool he was pressured by the by the congregation to force me to do the things that 
I, I was a good kid. I was the best, most moral, honest, loyal. I never lied. I was a good child. I just spoke my truth. My little sister left the organization. She ran away when she was 16. I was forbidden to speak to her because she was now considered an apostate, somebody who spoke against. She was never baptized. It was never her choice to be a Jehovah's Witness. She was born into that family. I did it because my mother married a Jehovah's Witness and I was a little girl. I was eight. I never had a dad and I wanted a dad so bad. I wanted him to be proud of me and I wanted to do everything that I could do to make him happy. I was the best Jehovah's Witness girl. I was knocking on doors by age seven, six, giving talks on the platform by age seven, standing on the street corner in the rain, having people yell at me, tell me I was stupid, slam the door in my face. I did it for my God. I did it for my father, my dad, my stepdad. I did it because I thought I was doing the right thing. But my little sister couldn't handle it. When I got married, she said, please don't leave me here in this house because I was my mother's little servant. I did everything for my mom. And when she says, when you go, I'm going to have to do everything. And I said, I'm sorry, I have to move on. I have to, I have to have a life of my own. And so I left and she ran away. She begged me to let me, to let her live with me. My ex-husband who was abusive, 10 years of abuse, Jehovah's witness, abusive, mental and physical said no, he didn't want the responsibility. I was about to have a baby. She wanted to see her new nephew or niece, whoever it would be. She hadn't seen me in over a year since she'd been living with this other family who was a different religion, but they were nice to her. I came down to California to see my family and my fa father said, don't see her. If you don't go see her, she'll have to come home. She'll want to come home. And so I didn't see her. Three weeks later, she was killed in a car accident. Who the fuck was I to judge her and not let her see her nephew? No, it was her niece. It was her niece. She'd already met my son. This was my daughter, Elise. He, and, and the thing is, my daughter, so much like my sister. She was my, she wasn't my natural sister. She was a, my father's child. Isn't that funny? the one who raised me, the one who she ran away from. I still talked to her, but I didn't see her because I was in a different country. When my little sister died, my mom's mo mom and dad's marriage almost blew up. It took them two years. They tried to hold it together. But my father, I'll tell you, my father went out and he had a one night stand. He got drunk. My father never drank, ever. My, my stepdad, never such an honorable man. Yes, he lost it and he beat me because he was driven to it. I'm not giving him excuses. I'm just telling, me, uh, telling you, I know how things can cause you to do certain things and the pressure can cause you to snap. He felt regret and I never blamed him for it. But my mother was very, very cold. She'd been molested and she had a very warped view of sexuality and sex and my father never had intimacy. And he was dying. He just needed to be comforted. And he went out and he got drunk. And he said, this person came up and he says, I just wanted to feel what it felt like to be held by somebody and kissed by somebody with passion. I wanted to drown my grief. He came home and he told my mom and she knew. She knew why he had done it and she forgave him. But two years later, their marriage blew up. My little sister ran away. She was gone. The reason... My dad went out and drank was because of the grief for my little sister. So now he's gone, she's gone, my dad's gone, my family's blown up. My father left the Jehovah's Witness organization. At that time, I didn't, but I was told to cut him off because he was now considered an apostate, speaking up against the Jehovah's Witnesses, God forbid. But I didn't cut him off, he was my dad. He'd raised me and then my mother left the organization and then I left the organization. It took 10 years, oh God, longer than that. But it took me seven to 10 years before I, I was comfortable knowing that I had not done anything wrong. But I raised my kids as Jehovah's Witnesses. You see how it goes on and on, it's karmic. My son is a very honorable, loyal, 
guy, just like I am. My son is my soulmate. He's very much like me. And he believes in black and white, just like I did. And he stayed firmly in the organization. All of his friends were. It was easier for him to stay there because that's all he knew. If he were to leave, he wouldn't have anyone. But I, I'd been, I was done. And when I left the organization, I was alone. I was isolated. I had no friends, no one. Because you don't associate with anyone outside of your organization. I was alone. I was in California and I had to start over again. And that's why I really don't have very many friends. When I went to Wisconsin, met my soul family, I grabbed on to them and the, my friends there because I had never had any friends here in California. I was a Jehovah's Witness. My son said to me, after a while, when I started this spiritual journey, I, I got very um, vocal about it. I wasn't bashing Jehovah's Witnesses because there's a lot of wonderful people that are Jehovah's Witnesses. My friends were. They were doing what they thought was is the right thing, just like I was. They're not bad people. Some of them are, just like Catholics. Some of them are bad, some of them are good. They're just people. But they were blinded like I was. And I tried not to speak out against the organization because it's not that wasn't my place. I was there for a reason. I was taught honor and integrity and morals and respect and, and the basic truths of the Bible which to me are morals. There's a lot of the Bible that I find disgusting and vile, and I don't believe that God had anything to do with it. But I'm not going to get into that with all of the people who are religious people. I'm not here. That's not my job. I'm not here for that. My job is to tell you that there is one God, and he is loving, and he does not tell you to cast your family members out, cut them off. You're not allowed to associate with anybody in high school because they're going to corrupt your mind. Yes, I agree. Bad association spoils useful habits. But if you're taught from a young age to be honorable, loyal, to have morals and integrity, you will be able to recognize who is a negative influence and who is not. Just because you're Jewish doesn't mean everyone in the Jewish organization is a good person. Just because you're Jehovah's Witness doesn't mean everybody in the organization is a good person. Just because you're Catholic, on and on it goes. And just because you call yourself a light worker, a spiritual person, doesn't mean you are working in the light. What I watched last night, I was connecting with a spiritual person. And they were saying to me, they blocked him from me. They are someone who is calling themselves my friend. I work with them, apparently on Facebook. And they said to me, whoever this was, they said to me, he loves me more than he loves you. And I said, it's not about that one more than the other. It doesn't mean you're going to run out of love if you love somebody. When you love, you, you love more and more and more, and it creates healing and, and, and goodness and, and growth. It's not love to say, if he loves you, he can't love me. There is no competition. If someone is meant to be with you, they're meant to be with you. If they love you, they love you. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't covet your neighbor's husband. Don't covet anyone. That's a sin, Bible thumpers. It's a sin. So I watched that. And I said, he loves me. He will come to me. But he has to stand up like I did. Because my son, when I got vocal the way I have in this organization, <laughs> with his organization watching me, I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook all over the place, you know, too many of his friends were seeing it and he was becoming embarrassed. That's your mom. Wow. Your mom speaks to angels. Your mom is doing things, you know, she's, she works with Oracle cards, it says in the Bible, do not be seeking advice from a fortune teller of events. Do not be looking to the stars for your answers. My son made a conscious choice. I was not associating with Jehovah's Witnesses. I was never disfellowshipped from the organization. I chose to leave years ago. So I am basically considered like I never was. If I were to go back, I would probably be reprimanded, disfellowshipped, just whatever, publicly reproved. I've been publicly reproved before. When my ex-husband molested my daughter, the elders came to my home and they said, because I was filing for divorce, he lied and said he didn't do it, but I was filing for divorce. And they said, if you... Divorce him, you will be disfellowshipped. These were the two elders that came to my house and sat in my house when my 12-year-old daughter had been molested by this man who stood on the platform and 
gave talks and said prayers and led people in Bible study, they knew. But I, but it wasn't as far as they were concerned since my daughter was so young and didn't, was too embarrassed to say and didn't want to tell what he had done. Since there was no proof of intercourse, it was not considered a, dis, a, a divorcing reason. I said, get the fuck out of my house. I divorced him. He admitted it later and went to jail. But I was going to be disfellowshipped from this congregation, just like all the religious organizations that put it under, sweep it under the carpet when there's molestation because they don't want the organization to look bad instead of thinking about the victims. So since I'm so outspoken, my son said to me, Mom, I can't have this. You know, if you, I love you. You know I love you. I love you more than anything. And if you come back to this organization, my arms are out to you. But if you don't, I'm going to have to cut you off. You will be like you are dead to me because that's what the Bible says. And I said, the Bible doesn't teach you to treat your parents with disrespect. I never cut my father off. I never cut my sister off. I made that fatal mistake to not let her see her niece. And she died. And I will never forgive myself for that. I try. I really do. But that was my little sister. And she looked up to me. And I cut her off. She had no one. I know what it feels like because I have no one. I have my soul family now. That's why I hold on to them with everything in me and I love them so much. And even that person that I thought was my twin that I went out to see that ended up not being, he led me to my soul family and I'm grateful for him, to him for that. I spoke about this this morning. I did a post, but I feel it needs to go out on YouTube for the people that don't see my Facebook page. Because I said to my son, I will never go back to any religious organization ever again. I will never be bound by rules such as that. There is no church in God's eyes. That is a man-made thing in order to control the masses. And he said, well, I hope you can live with your decision because you're dead to me. And I said, I can live with my decision, Devin. I hope you can live with yours. I love my son. I almost died having him. I'm proud of him for being a good man, a good husband, a good father. But he's very black and white, and there are a lot of gray areas in life. So you ask yourself, not your religion. You ask your heart and your God, what would love say and what would love do? And you do that. I understand some, my friend of mine, my cousin, actually, ex a friend of mine who is an ex Jehovah's Witness as well. She said to me, Sherry, I know you're just venting and sharing your, you know, emotions, but we all know that this is about ascension and growth and we all chose this life. No, I'm not just venting. I watched my twin's family blocking him from me and, and, and lying and manipulating and someone who's pretending to be my friend so that they can get information. And I watched them. They took him something and it said, she doesn't want you. Look at what it's, she says. She said, good luck. She's better off with, you know, I, I hope you have a good life. And the response was, she just doesn't want to hurt me anymore. She doesn't want to hurt me. Lies and manipulation. You try to pretend to be my friend and you take my words and you twist them around and you send them back and you let someone that I love more than life itself think that I don't love him. This is my twin soul. I've had lifetimes with him. And when the father says it's time, nothing will stop the twin souls from coming together. Nothing. I don't have to fight you. I don't have to be arguing, arguing with you. I'm saying this because there's a lot of people that watch this page that are coming out of religion and they're afraid to be cut off from their family. But I will tell you, there is soul family out here that is stronger than your blood. They'll be here for you. And your father never leaves you. Your God never told them <clears throat> to cut you out. I was told by spirit that someone that I am presently intimidated by will prove to be my strongest ally. At times I wonder if this is my twin's brother. I wonder. But I know there's someone pretending to be my friend that is not. And I'm wondering how you fit that in your morals and in your integrity and your honor. How do you sleep with yourself at night telling yourself, I'm doing what God wants me to do? No, you're not. You don't know what love is if that's what you're doing. 
My son doesn't understand either. And I don't hate him. I love him. And one day, I hope he recognizes it. I have a bond with my grandson. I felt my grandson. I've seen him in my dreams. He's a crystal child, just like my other grandson, Trey. And no one's going to stop the love. No one will stop love. He travels through energy, vibration. My twin is not in my physical presence, but he has my full love. And he feels it and he knows it. I hope he can break through the binds that hold him back through religion. So today, I was told by spirit to work with the vampire deck. Wouldn't that be lovely for the religious people? And the fairy tale deck. So I wasn't going to speak about this, I didn't think, until that song came on. And that's exactly what the song is about. <clears throat> the way he speaks about his lover. <clears throat> who knows everybody's disapproval. <clears throat> that would be me, right? If, heaven, if heavens ever did speak, she is the last true mouthpiece. I am a mouthpiece for, for my father, just like so many light workers, true light workers are. We speak out against the masses. We don't care. We're not, we don't shrink back and worry about what others are going to say because we're doing what our father asks us to do. Our father isn't asking us to cut anyone off. You can have your religion if it makes you happy, if it makes you comfortable. As I said, there's many very beautiful, wonderful people that are in religion. There's nothing wrong with them if that's what they need. But don't judge another for their choices. Don't cut people off because they are not of your faith. I don't have to be the same faith as my twin. My daughter married a Jewish boy, man. And he doesn't... He doesn't... Uh, do, he doesn't partake in the religion, but they go to the family celebrations and they're respectful. I am very respectful of, of other people's cultures and belief systems. Just don't force yours upon me. I won't force mine upon you. You don't have to come to this page, but don't lie and manipulate and, and become a blockage between me and the one that I love. This one just spoke out. It literally flipped out, so I'm going to take it. I wasn't going to at first, but, but I'm going to. It came out for a reason. Just like that song started for a reason. The church that offers no absolutes. The church doesn't know what's going to happen after you leave this planet. They can't promise you anything, except for binding you by rules. When he says, she tells me to worship in the bedroom, that means love. That's the heaven that you'll be sent to. Heaven... Hell? There is no hell. This is hell. What we live in here. Spirit is just spirit. Born sick? We're all born with imperfection in us. But we love who we are. And you call us sick if we are gay, if we are heathens, if we are not following the rules, you call us sick. So yeah, take me to church and I'll worship at the shrine of your lies. And then you can sharpen your, la your knife with with everything that you find wrong with me, and you can use it against me and stab me, and I can slowly die that deathless death. It's, it's, because that's what it is, it's a torture. That is hell, that is purgatory. A deathless death. Just like my son, you were dead to me. That's okay. So here, <clears throat> it's about ascension and growth. For us to recognize that we have our own choice. God gave us all free will. And there's nothing wrong with us. Pay attention to your intuition. Now what's going on here? The Knight Rider. Psychic protection. Shield. Bad dream. Yeah, that's what I had last night. But what was interesting is it wasn't a, just a dream. I was connecting with them on a higher level. And we were energetically fighting. They were energetically telling. Whoever this one was, was, was somebody that is using their spiritual gifts. They are using their gifts in the dark. It's not coming from the light to do what they're doing, to bind someone, to hold someone back, to lie and manipulate. I knew that I was working with this one, and we were, we were literally psychically battling. I got it yesterday that that was going to happen. There's a psychic battle. I've known for a long time that there is psychic manipulation that's holding my twin and I apart. I know that. And it's people on the other side that have a belief system and they are aware of their alchemical abilities and they use their gifts to the dark to bind people. Binding spells, 
You know, I had a client call me yesterday and ask me, he says, what is it that you say that you do with the animals? And I said, I'm a shaman. And he says, well, I went to a, to the lady at the, at the magic shop and she had nothing nice to say about you. And I said, really, does she know me? No, but she said only men can be shaman. And I said, look, I've had so many past lives as, Indi as Indian medicine women and men and warriors. I am not, I'm Welsh in this life. My shamanic gifts don't come from a tribe that hand them down to me. I've had this discussion with Indians before, the Native Americans. My father gave me my gifts. When I was a little girl, I spoke the language of the animals. I knew their language. I spoke to them. It was, it was documented. It was documented. I had to lose that language, unfortunately, when I became a Jehovah's Witness, and my father hasn't given it back to me because I had to learn the shamanic language instead so that I could help you guys. Because if I was able to speak cat or horse or dog like I did when I was a child, I would be conver con conversing with them. But I wouldn't be able to help you. But if I would be able to learn what all of the symbols and, and messages were from each animal, insect, bird, mammal, you would learn so much more and I could help you. I am a shaman. I have been given my gifts by my father. If you are Native American and have an issue with me being calling myself a shaman, you take it to the ancestors because you know what? The ancestors come to me. You see this Anasazi pottery right here? You might recognize it. The ancestors appear to me and they have guided me. So I said to him, the only thing I have to, I'm not going to bash another person. The only thing I have to say to you is take a look at that person. Has what they have given you, has it helped you? Has it helped you grow? And he says, well, actually, she has readers in here and she always finds something wrong with them and fires them and says there's something wrong with them. And I said, yeah, that's interesting. Probably somebody who disagrees with her. He says, well, she says I need to buy these candles from her in order to bring my soulmate in. And I said, you can go to the dollar store and buy your own candle. You don't need anyone to say an intention for you. I've got a lot of spiritual people that I have been connected with that they sell invocations. Or I will invoke for you this, that, or the other. You don't need someone else to invoke anything. This is your God. These are your angels. You go buy a white candle. You know what white stands for. You buy a purple candle, a red candle for passion, and you put your intention on that candle. And you call your, call your soulmate to you. You call your angels in for help. You don't need to pay someone else to do that for you. That's somebody who's using their spiritual gifts to manipulate you and to hold you down. So, you watch and you see. Is that one walking their walk and talking their talk? Are they preaching from the platform but living their life in a different way? Preaching love and, and acceptance and, and then saying, cut your family members off? Or, Preaching love and acceptance and, and forgiveness and fucking their best friend's wife. Because my dad watched that as, in the congregation as an elder many, many years. He says, I, it made me sick. I had to leave the organization because fellow elders would come to me and say, I'm having an affair with so-and-so's wife. But they stand on the platform. And those men, get this, when my father went out and had his one-night stand and he went immediately to my mother, he went to the congregation and confessed. They disfellowshipped him from the congregation in five minutes. Five minutes, there was no compassion, there was no understanding. My mother, who he sinned against, forgave him immediately. She knew what she had pushed him to. She knew the grief that he was dealing with. But the ones that disfellowshipped him, one of the ones that sat on his committee, was the one that was fucking his friend's wife. So, this wasn't a bad dream. This was an energetic connection. I had a shield of protection up. I knew this was coming. I called Archangel Michael in and I asked him, for full on protection. I knew what was going. I didn't know what was happening last night, but I knew it was coming. And I was connected and I was protected. I was riding a white horse in my dreams. The horse is spirit's assistance and helping you. Five, there's a significant change happening in your life. Always for the better, even if it feels tumultuous. It's a good idea to call upon spirit with help for help with these changes. So sometimes you might feel vulnerable when you're asleep. You're in that place where your body is in, in a comatose state and you can't control it. You may have night terrors, have feelings of fear when darkness comes. I don't fear the night. 
it can be a place of terror because what it does is it brings up memories from the past. The memories are coming up in your dreams because they're trying to help you see what needs to be healed. But it can be terrifying because it feels like that wound is ripped open again like it just happened. I've had it happen to me. And it's terrifying. And I've woken up knowing what it was. And yet, I'm, and my body's shaking. And it's taken me a while to walk myself out of it. I would, when I was first awakening, I would call my mentor and, and I would say, actually, I would write to her. She was on Facebook. And I would tell her, what, and, and, I, and I would, I, I was still in the throes of the nightmare. I knew it was a dream. And she said, look, you know what you can do. You know what it is. You know it's not real. Do your work. Call on your team. Calm yourself down. You know where you came from. Don't be afraid of, of the darkness. It's not even real. It's just your fear and it's your memories showing you what needs to be faced. They're nothing more than hauntings of, of, of memories. So if there's this happening in your life right now, there is a way for you to have help. This is the night rider that comes in to your dreams to help you, to protect you. Keeps your boundaries safe and will patrol the boundaries. That's why we ask for a shield of protection. They will allow you to understand your truths in a more gentle way. Please don't, it's your psyche, it's your own mind, it's your own fear that's allowing us. So you say, please help me with this. Help me recall my dreams slowly so that nights won't hold terror for me. I need my sleep. Help me have it become a safer place because there are special spirits that guide the nights and this is it. This isn't one that's coming to harm you. This is coming to help you. I had somebody with me last night. They walked me through. I went through a pond. It was interesting. I was on this beautiful estate. It was beautiful, gorgeous where these people lived. This big religious family. I didn't see my twin. They were holding him back from me. I saw the family members. But someone was there. They were listening. They didn't say anything at the time, but they were listening. I felt strong. And I thought, I saw this big hedge. Remember four years ago, I saw that same hedge and I wondered if I could just slide through this hedge. But then I saw a pond, which was my emotional waters, a pond, still waters run deep. And I went into that water and I waded across it and I went to the bus station and all of a sudden I became somebody else and I said, I need a ticket. I need to get out of here. I need to get to the island. My son lives on Vancouver Island. So energetically, I was going there in my dream. And they said, the last ticket's been sold. You're going to have to wait. You'll have to go tomorrow. And I said, no, I need to go now. And I fainted. And then I was someone else. I saw a friend standing there. And they had a ticket. And I said, can I take that ticket? Can I use your ticket? I need to go. I need to get there. There was someone helping me. I waded through my emotional waters and I didn't feel fear going through that dark water. It was dark. And that big beautiful estate was like a prison and those people that were supposed to be loving, they were fighting and they were malicious and they were mean and they were lying and they were manipulating. So this nightmare, this nightmare, this is the one that comes and her rider, they're going to take you to a safer place and they're going to guard you and they're going to ensure you that you will not be stolen. You will not succumb to just a ghost because people take their lives at times because they feel this, someone grabbing at them, a dark, an entity. It's fear. Don't be afraid. It's just fear. Fear is false expectations appearing real, false evidence appearing real. Someone asked me yesterday, do you deal with dark energy? No, I don't. I deal with the light. I don't put my faith in dark energy. I don't believe in that. It isn't real. There is no real hell. Don't listen to people when they tell you black energy is going to come and take you. That's ridiculous. That's fear. That's bullshit. You will not succumb. The dark rider will come and, and, and seal up any auric tears in your auric field. Ask Archangel Michael to do that. Do a sweep of my auric field. Are there any tears that I've missed from the barbs that have been thrown in to me by others from the outside when I was tired, when I, when I allowed myself to succumb to my fear and my shield was weak? Shore up my shield. Fill in those auric tears, please. 
allow my sleep to be restful. Don't allow these ones to come in and feed on my energy through fear, through lies and manipulation, bullshit like my client was told, just so you can go back and spend more money. Oh, you need a reading so I can do an, uh, an invoca invocation for you. Fuck that. Are you kidding me? I don't do that. No, I don't need to light a candle for you. We don't need to go to church into confession and light a candle so our angels will hear us. Who the fuck do you think you are? I go to my own father. I go to my own angels and they help me and they guide me and they protect me. Sleep is a time for us to rest and recuperate and regenerate, not to be worrying and be bothered by those who are fucking around with their spiritual gifts. Yes, I say spiritual gifts. It's dark spirit. It's a choice. There is no devil. There is no hell. There are people that are choosing to do evil, rotten, fucked up things like hanging puppies and ripping the tusks out of elephants while they're alive and shooting animals for, for game and for sport and lighting kittens on fire. Yes, all of these things people have been writing to me about lately. That's why they're in the foremost of my mind. Those are sick, fucked up people that are choosing to do evil things because they are so unhappy with themselves that they're tortured and they want to torture something else. Or they have no power over their own selves, so they want to have power over another. Just like religion. Just like a dictator. Call your guides in. Call your spiritual team in. Call your father to give you restful sleep. Hold your amethyst as you go to sleep and see yourself in a beautiful, peaceful, white light as you drift off safely in your sleep. And you tell yourself what to believe. You tell yourself what to believe. I said to that man, what do you think? Don't, you don't need me. The reason you're coming to me is because I'm teaching you how to work with your animal messengers, but I don't have to look them up for you. You can look them up. You go to Google. He keeps coming to me and telling me, he says, can I use you as a, can you, can you be my mentor? And I said, sure, but you know, you don't need me to, to look up and give you all the animal messengers. You can go to Google and look them up yourself. You don't have to pay me for that. I'm not here to make a buck on you. My job is to enlighten people and to help them find their own way so that they can ascend to a highest level and be the best that they can be. Jesus as, as a fictional character or real, I'm not going to argue it, didn't go fish for everyone and bring them fish. He taught them how to fish so they can do it themselves. A father teaches his children how to ride a bike so that they can ride it themselves. He doesn't say here, get in your bike seat in the back and, and I'll drive you around or no, you're not going to get a driver's license. Let me drive you because I'm afraid you're going to get hurt. We're all going to get hurt. That's what life is all about. It's about learning lessons. But a true teacher teaches someone so that they can teach another and they can move forward on their own. So as a blessing in this message, understand that you can be vulnerable. You can work consciously to rid yourself of the fear of the darkness. You can, again, have a healthy night's sleep, dreams that have been disturbing you. You can understand what they mean. When you get shot in your dream and, you're, and, and you think you're dead, that's the end of something. When blood flows, that's your life's force, that's passion. When you're falling from an airplane, free falling, oh my God, I'm falling, I'm gonna die. No, you're falling in love. You're falling for something. Maybe you're falling for something bad. There's symbolic messages in dreams. It's just symbology, it isn't real. You will never die in a dream. You'll wake up because it isn't real. You think that you've died, but you haven't. So these disturbing dreams, you're gonna understand them and then you're gonna be able to vanquish whatever it is that was coming up needing to be healed. You shift in your own energy. You will shift your own energy. You will work with it, with it with the energy of the sun, with the energy of your crystals, with your father and with your angels, and you will shift your own energy and lift it up and put up your own shield and know how to clear your own shield. You know that when you speak negative thoughts and you think negative thoughts, your body starts to believe that. So if you keep telling yourself things, your body's gonna believe it. You tell your body positive things, your body's gonna believe it. I saw a girl yesterday when I went to get my nails done. P.S., look at my nails, aren't they cute? Black with silver. I said, wow, to myself, someone's gonna say, yeah, she's a witch. <laughs> I love them. I'm not a witch, P.S. Look up what a witch is. 
But when I went there, I saw this girl standing there, this lady with her little girl, and she had these long legs. She looked like a little horse herself, a little gazelle. She was adorable. And the mother had the most beautiful skin on her legs, no cellulite. And I said to my angels, I would like skin like that, please. That's beautiful. There's no reason for me to have cellulite in the back of my legs. I work out. I, I, I walk. That's just little pockets of, of sadness, trapped fat in there. It's something that I don't wish to carry any longer. So I would like that, please. Thank you, let's work on that. That's how my body responds to me. My body starts working for me when I work with my body. Same thing with your mind. I have beautiful, peaceful night sleeps. The energy that comes to me in my dreams is to teach me, but it's not frightening, it's, it's enlightening. You tell yourself until you believe what you tell yourself. Just like religion has told you until you have believed religion to fear your own God, your own father to cut your own family members off. That's why people do sick things, because they've had it beat into their head like they've been in a cult. In a good way, you've been able to shift your energy and you have support, you know. But in a bad way, you live in fear. You're unable to understand why you're having this happen in your dreams and what does it mean to you. But you can reverse this. You may have gotten to the place where you are sleeping during the day because you're afraid to sleep at night. I know people like that. And it messes your chemistry. It messes up your magnetic field. So when you work with this energy, no, check this out. Look at the Galactic Federation that I put in front of me. Here you are being supported by green citrine, by green jade, by amethyst, and it's amplified by clear quartz, powerful energy, it's peaceful energy the color of love and healing, the color of peacefulness and spirituality. You are this little galactic person, this star child. Look at the little, look at the stairs going up. And you ride on spirits back and they help you. And the night rider comes and patrols your borders. There she is, and you're safe. It's a beautiful thing. I'm going to do one card from the fairy tale oracle. I don't know where I'm doing our reading today. I haven't decided. It's quite humid. Remember I told you yesterday things were about to get hot and steamy. I was told by spirit I was about to speak quite vehemently as well. So I have. I posted my, my uh, post this morning. And I shared a picture of my beautiful son and my grandson. And I'm sure he would hate that. But what, what, what worse damage can he do? I'm already dead to him, right? So... He's not dead to me, and neither is Teddy. So if you want to see what my beautiful son looks like, I shared it on LinkedIn, on YouTube. I mean, not YouTube, on Google+, and on my Facebook page, Angel Whisper page. His name is Devin, and he's beautiful. Teddy's name is Theodore. Isn't that cute? Theodore. He's a teddy bear. Remember Theodore? Alvin and, oh, actually, Alvin and the Chipmunks. Remember Theodore? <laughs> I always think of him as a teddy bear. I saw him in my dreams. He was six years old. But I think that he's the little boy that my twin has been helping take care of. I think because it's the same story that I keep seeing around and around and again and again. And you know, yesterday, just like I've said before, when I gave all my personal story, I had so many people write to me and their story was identical. Identical. Yes, I am a shaman. No, I'm not Native American. I was many times. But yes, the ancestors do come to me and if you don't want to believe me, you don't have to. But Dr. Mesri, homeopathic doctor in Canada, has the records of me speaking as speaking to my animals. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Here we go. Snow White and Rose Red. Hmm. I remember this story. Sister Love. Snow White and Rose Red. Now, these stories are always a little bit more complicated. Let me move the Galactic Federation of Light away. And let's bring forth a shield of protection. Pyrite, titanium, and rose quartz. And we'll keep courage up here as well. I want to show you something, actually. Yesterday, I was moving things around on my desk. And uh, I was talking about how you can't keep true love apart. And I said that in my dream. And as I said that, this is what happened. I didn't push it. It just happened in front of me. And I looked at this. 
And look how you can't keep us apart. I looked at the masculine, the divine masculine, and the divine feminine. I thought that was pretty amazing. It, it literally moved in front of me and connected together. It just shows you that what's meant to be will be. So, Snow White, we all know the story of Snow White, but do you know the story of Rose Red? Well, these two children were very fond of each other. They always would walk together holding hands. And Snow White said to Rose Red, we're never gonna leave each other. And Rose Red said, no, nope, never, so long as we live. And then their mother would say, what, has one, what one has, sh she must share with the other. So they would run through the forest and they would gather their berries. See the berries? Remember, I told you in my dream the other day I had a bag and there were berries in it and I dumped them out? Interesting. As they ran through the forest, they were not threatened. No animals came to hurt them. The, the rabbits would come and they would share the little cabbage leaf from their hands and the, and the gazelle would come by, to their side and the stag would run alongside them playing and the birds would sit upon the pre, tree branches and sing to them. Nothing ever happened to them. Not, nothing ever happened to harm them. And if they stayed out too late in the forest and night came, they would just lie down near one another on the moss and they would sleep until morning. Their mother was not worried about them. This reminds me of me and my cousins when we were little. We played in the forest until 11 o'clock at night. Nothing ever happened to us. We were always safe. I remember my mom, I could hear her calling, Sherry Lynn, or my grandma, Sherry Lynn, Garth, Greg, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> we would come running from the quarry. We were in the forest. It was dark, but it just got dark because in Canada in the summer, it stays very, very late. late. But we were not in fear. My grandma wasn't worried either. We were safe. I was very protected. I didn't realize until I was an adult why I was so protected. Those were my, those were my friends, the animals. They knew me, they were caring for us. So this tale is about sisterhood and family and love and trust and people who have been raised well and nurtured with love. And, and the fact that, as I said in my post this morning, if you are, and, and today, if you were taught morals and integrity and honor and love and care, you don't need religion, right? You know how to treat people. You don't have to have somebody give you rules and tell you how to do it. Comes to you, comes by you honestly. So these ones, they're at home in nature, just like I was. And they're protected by the nature spirits, just like I was. There are angels watching over them. They weren't even afraid in the dark. We spent the night in the forest. We did. My cousin Garth, he was like Huckleberry Finn. He'd light fires and we would stay in a tent and we stayed out there. We weren't very old when I think about it now. I was, I was 12 when I moved to California and Garth was four years older than me, so 16, right? But we stopped, I think, probably a year and a half before that. So we were like, four, he was 14, he was the oldest. My brother was two years younger than him. I was two years younger than my brother. Sean was a year younger than me. <laughs> All out in the forest. So in fairy tales, the bear is not a bear, clearly, right? He's an enchanted prince. Interesting, my prince, he's a bear, and I know that my, my twin sleeps with a bear. I've seen it. And their trust and love in him is rewarded, and their friendship, he returns. And because of the love that they give him, his curse is broken, and the bear skin falls away, and he finds himself to be a prince. They find him to be a prince. And of course, one of them gets married and it's happily ever after. And then the, there's a circle of love and trust and joy and warmth and it goes on and on and it continues to be to everyone who ever entered the, that home. Have you ever walked into a home where you felt that? I have. My soul family's like that. But their family, there's another part of the family that could be quite bitter because they weren't rich. But they aren't bitter. They're full of love. My soul family isn't rich, but they are the most loving people in the world. My father, my family, my, my stepfather who ended up throwing me out of his life, he's got more money than I, I can, I, he will never be able to spend it, ever. But these ones who have so little, they've been taught to share. My soul family, my Uncle Phil, my Mama Sherry, my Papa Terry, my Auntie Beth, none of them are my blood, but they share everything that they have. They give to everyone. They're very generous. 
And when you do that, so much love is there. So when this card comes to you, the message basically is, is it's your time. It's your time to do something good, a good turn. It's for you to appreciate also the gifts that you've been given. My landlord's incredibly generous to me. He's generous. Look how he took Prince in, right? I keep thinking of him as God, how, how God takes us in. There was someone who took my twin in as well. I know that. And I think my twin took someone in. I've watched these things. One day I'll know the true full story. All I know is there's been love and generosity and people giving that are not blood family. Not even of the same race or of the same makeup. Prince is an animal. We're humans. But know that when you give love, it can expand and it becomes deeper and more lasting the more we give. And these sisters, everyone loves them because of who they are and how they treat others. So it's important for you to appreciate what you've been gifted with, the friendships, the family, and the people, the soul family who have been good to you. Sandy, Christina, so many people. Janice, I'm thinking of the people who have gifted me beautiful things just, just because they're soul family and they're kind. Karen miller Newson. And you know what? Gifts aren't always things. The best gift is your time, a hug, knowing that you can turn to someone when you're low. My Uncle Phil, he's the most amazing person in the world. He lost his wife, his best friend, his soulmate, several years ago, and he went through a really, really hard time. But he's bounced back because of friends being all around him, and, and he's kept himself busy, too. He didn't just lie down into a puddle. He made himself get out there, and, and people reached out, and he's got a great circle of friends, and so many love him. And he's been there for me. And when his little cat, Maggie, was dying, he laid on the floor with her because she was too sick to get up. And she died there with him. And then he went in a really, really difficult time. And I stayed up with him. I was with him and her in the middle of the night. I was helping her with him. She was trying to help him. I travel in my dreams. That's what I could do to help Uncle Phil and help Maggie. And Maggie was trying to help him let her go. It was painful. But that's what soul family does. That's what love is. That's what friendship is about. That's what family is. And even the sadness and even the mistakes and even the lessons, they've brought us something wonderful. They brought us growth and understanding and they've taught us to be more compassionate because of the things that we've been through. I've been through all the things in my life because this is my job, this is my work. I knew that my twin soul relationship would be so painful. I was shown it would be, I didn't know it would be this painful. But I chose to take it. And my, and, my, and my path, my spiritual path, spirit told me, this will be the hardest thing you've ever had to do. You don't have to accept it. I didn't have to accept it. But I wanted to. And it made me understand, I chose this life. I came here to do this. That's why I'm doing it. I put up a banner sometimes. It's a picture of Joan of Arc. And it's a beautiful. It shows this beautiful woman with a scar right across her face where she's been slashed in battle. Many of us have been slashed emotionally, spiritually, even physically. But she knew why it had happened to her. Just like I knew why. Just like my friend said to me this morning, Sherry, everything happens for a reason, you know that. I know you're just trying to express your feelings. No, I wasn't. I know I chose this life. I accepted this path. I chose it before I came here. I just had to realize that when I was reawakened and, and spirit came to me and said, you sure you want to continue with this? You want to do this? And I said, yes, I do. Of course I had to because I chose this life. This was my path. I chose this twin soul life. It was my path. I want to show you the picture of Joan of Arc. I was burned at the stake as a witch. In a past life, I've watched it. It was awful. I'm not afraid. I was born to do this. Look at the slash right across her face. It could have taken her eye out, but it wouldn't take her eye out because these are her spiritual eyes. 
and that's spiritual armor, and that's a sword of truth. She's a peaceful warrior, but she carries a big stick. So everything we've gone through has been a blessing in reality. So we want to take what we've been through and we want to turn it into joy. This story, there's another aspect to it. One sister is dark, one is light. Both is good, but one is very outgoing, probably an Aries, look at her red hair. And the other one is shy, more quiet, like a Pisces, like my twin. But they share everything. One marries the bear prince, the other marries the prince's brother. They love each other dearly. So with us, we need to marry the dark and the light within us. There's nothing wrong with the dark in us. We all have dark in us. We don't reject us or each other for our scars, our foibles, our, what we perceive as flaws. We bring both of them together and recognize that that's what makes us whole. And we are open and honest and vulnerable. And in that, we are not at, at risk. We are strong. So what appears to frighten other people is not a, something that's going to frighten up us. I wasn't afraid to do this. I was born to do this. It's an opportunity for me to show my love and lack of fear and generosity and grow solid bonds with people that love me and that I love and will give me strength and give me all that I need and blessings. This is about family bonds. This is about love between soul family. This is about sharing even the little that you have and about being rewarded for your good deeds. This is about when you share, it creates abundance. It creates more love. This is about loyalty. This is about extending hospitality and generosity, seeing beyond the appearances. These are little beggar girls but they are full and rich. This is being rewarded for having a good heart, a true heart. This reading is at an hour. And you know, it's interesting, I always say this. I feel as though the readings that I do during the day are so much more important than the weekly readings. I wish people would realize this. The weekly readings get so much more airtime. And these ones get so little. And there's so much more depth, I feel. I don't know why that is. I guess it's because the ones that are really awake and the ones that are following, the ones that are looking, they get these lessons. They pay attention. It goes to who needs it. I hope you guys have a beautiful Sunday. I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna go do our weekly reading. I'm gonna send out to my twin, I love you, Jake. And to my son, I love you, Devin. I love you, Teddy. I love you, Elise, my daughter, and my grandson, Trey. I love you, Papa Terry and Mama Sherry and Uncle Phil and all my soul family. My friend Julie and my best friend Diane, she was in my dream the other night. Good people. There's a lot of good people in the world, you guys. Take care.